never a good thing to be talking kickers after big games. But we, of course, are Adam Vinatieri. We'll be here to break down Maher, the mixed missed extra points, where they go from here. Cowboys taking down the goat. Where does he go from here? Uh, all wrapping up a super wild card weekend. Everybody, Kay Adams here on Up and Adams, and I love nothing more than when players shut everybody up all week, probably longer than a week. Just leading up to any Cowboys game this season with Dak Prescott under center, especially with this playoff game up against the GOAT. What are we going to see? Which Dak Prescott will show up on the field? Will he avoid those costly turnovers that have haunted him all season? How far can he take this team into the playoffs? Well, he dominated from pretty much the start to finish on their way to this 31-14. Never really got interesting. It was sort of weird. It was a rare NFL viewing experience where you're like, this. all right, I think we collectively, we, uh, we know what's up here. Like, let's call it a night, shall we? We don't have to stay out here and play the rest of this thing. There was no turnaround. There was no 28-3 vibe to this at all. Uh, and Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy, and Micah and CD and Van Der Esch, all of them, they oust the GOAT. Five touchdowns. How many turnovers? None. That is shut up material. That's pretty good. And now his, not first, not second, but his third trip to the divisional round. So here is a very self-aware Dak Prescott talking about his personal turnaround from that terrible, dismal Week 18 performance against the Commanders that had everybody riled up and worried about last night. I got away from the way that I play this game, got greedy. Uh, Tried to, tried to just force some throws, try to take the big ones, um, and that's not who I've, I've been throughout my career. Obviously, just taking what, God, taking what they give me, waiting on the big shot, and I think it was uncharacteristic. So, yeah, sure, it was, uh, it was a way for me to just dial back in. Um, but at, at the sense, I mean, I wiped that clean and just uh, I knew what this game meant. I knew how important it, it was for us uh, and just, as I said, prepared. Okay, to be fair, it looked like the struggles might continue. Uh, those misfires on three straight passes to open up the game. But once he got those out of the way, a little rust, a little whatever, he barely missed again. Dak leads the league in regular interceptions, though, okay? He does. Nope, not last night. Near perfect passer rating. Everyone can zip it. We can all shut up. They scored the first... I mean, they, the 24 points of the entire game, four straight touchdowns on the road. And I'm already sitting here like, oh, man, I need to eat my words on what I was saying about San Francisco yesterday being unstoppable and no one can play them. If the Cowboys play like this, it'll be a game. It'll be a game on the road in the Bay Area this week in the divisional round. But they do have to figure out the kicking situation that everyone's talking about. Never good and everybody's talking kicking after a big game. It just is not. And Brett Maher missed a playoff record four extra points. So Adam Vinatieri has agreed to hop on and give his thoughts in a bit. No one's more clutch than him. We'll get into the men mental side of it. Uh, and also what happens this week? What are the discussions happening? Who trusts who and doesn't? And what should the Cowboys do? What does McCarthy do in this situation uh, when history is made in dismal kicking performances despite a win? Now, let's get to the McCarthy part of this because this coach deserves some love this morning. So many questions, so much criticism about his job over the past year. And really from the moment that Sean Payton stepped away from the Saints, the connective tissue was going on between Sean Payton taking this job in Dallas eventually. Jerry Jones loving Sean Payton, wanting that. And it always sort of felt like, Mike McCarthy, the world is on your shoulders. You mess up. You wear a Vince Lombardi coat. You show up to Lambeau wearing that. You're going down. Your job is over. And you could see what I love to see is relief when things happen for people and that you saw that from the moment that the game ended. I mean, Kirk Cousins, shield your eyes. This is what we saw. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, there we go. Look at this. All love in this Cowboys locker room. Man, they really looked so good last night. <laughs> Packers fans are like, this morning. I don't know, he's a pretty good coach, it looks like. Man, this guy that's dancing. By the way, what is that? Can we say that again? They're re-racking it, everybody. That's TV lingo. Okay, so he gets the chain. Everybody's celebrating. I would never take my shirt off in the locker room knowing there's cameras in there. Everybody's running around. They, oh! <laughs> that's amazing. It's like a guy at a bowling alley when he hits a strike, and that's like the dance move that he makes. This guy went 4-1 and one with Cooper Rush. 
double-digit wins in back-to-back -back seasons. Doesn't happen for Cowboys coaches of late. He beat Tom Brady with all that pressure mounting about his job. So have yourself a day, McCarthy. You go hit the bowling alley in the arcade. You get yourself some wings. Let's keep this thing going. On the Buck side of things, this game played out the way most of their season has. The offense completely out of sorts. Brady did things that were head-scratching, inexplicable. I always know where I'm at with Tom Brady. I no longer do. This throw. Uh, huh? This is his first red zone interception since 2019. He and Evans, I mean, you heard Troy. What is going on? It seemed like they were on totally different pages again after we thought, no, 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 they're back. He had a 200 yard game. He had a touchdown. He had a touchdown drop. Now they're like lovey dovey again. Everything's good. No. And the defense, also talented, did not play up to their potential in this one either. So the speculation, the takeaway is that it's over and it's all going to happen just like it is with Aaron Rodgers, but in a different way because, you know, we saw him leave Brady the field. And he's at home, he's kissed, there's his parents, kissing his parents, and we're all gonna speculate, and we should. We don't know what's going on, and he leads us on to believe different things. We didn't see this, though, last year. I was at that game, and we went back and watched the highlights because I never even saw the broadcast of it. I was, uh, I was in Tampa for this one. He, I remember, got beat up by the Rams, loses to the Rams, his face was bleeding at one point, and he left the field, and it was just, I don't know. I don't, uh, there was no parents on the field. There were no pictures being taken, none of that. Um, and he sat at the podium and he said, uh, or stood at the podium rather, and said, I need to figure out what I'm doing. I need some time. This feels different. And it's fair to, uh, you know, he said, I want to play till I'm 45. Like, okay, well, there's 45 birthday candles on the cake. You did it, kid. The question for Tom Brady is, is it enough? Is it enough? Uh, and I think, do we have the Tom Brady uh, sound? We do. Let's go to him post game and hear what he had to say after this loss. I just want to say thank you guys for everything this year. I really appreciate all your effort. And I know it's hard for you guys, too. It's hard for us players to make it through. And you guys got a tough job. And I appreciate all that you guys do to cover us and everyone who watches and is a big fan of the sport. We're very grateful for everyone's support. And, um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, I love this organization. It's a great place to be. And thank you, everybody, for welcoming me. All you regulars, and um, just very grateful for the respect, and I and, uh, hope I gave the same thing back to you guys. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Like you hope you gave the same thing back after like this season? Like are we, It seems like a goodbye, right? It's hard to imagine Brady staying there as well with how they're playing, what they look like. Um, and it's also hard to imagine him wanting to go out on that type of performance. That's the question. What is enough? What if you never get back there? Are we going to have to bring a shepherd's hook in and take you out? Like, cause you, you're going to want to leave on top. And if you, if Brady goes somewhere else, Raiders, great. Let's go. You're going to go to the AFC West and contend with, you know, what's going on with Justin Herbert and, and Patrick Mahomes out out there, like. And maybe somebody comes in and turns Russell Wilson around. Like, will you win then? And let's say you do go to the AFC West or any division, any team, and you win. Is that going to be, are you finally then going to be like, okay, I won at 46, I won at 47, and now I'm good to walk away? Or are you going to have that same adrenaline and say, like, I still, like, how does this movie end? Uh, we don't know. I would love to know how everybody else thinks uh, at uh, Up and Adam Show. I will say, I listened to his Let's Go podcast radio that he does um, with Jim Gray and Larry Fitzgerald was on yesterday. And hearing, you know, Brady before the game, it was just very, not, not nonchalant, but optimistic, almost like, I'm just going to go enjoy it. Like, we got to play the game. We're ready. We're prepared. Like, let's go out there and do it. It was very uh, like, oh, let's walk through the casino, put 20 on black. Oh, I lost 20 bucks. Like, let me walk out. It was different. It just all felt different. And I'm not going to go into the personal life part of it because none of us know that. None of it, like all these like Giselle gifts, like you're all idiots for putting those up, just wasting your own time. We don't know anything about that and that what that would play into or not play into. We will not know unless he were to tell us. Um, but we're all just speculating, I guess, on, on what he wants and what is enough. It used to be what does he want, what would make him happy. Playing football makes him happy. We know that from him. We know that from his actions. We know that from his close friends like Rob Gronkowski, who will be on our show tomorrow. And we'll ask him the same thing. He just wants to be happy. Playing football makes him happy. How does it end? That's the question. What and when is enough? For now, though, um, let's focus on what we do know. And the divisional round schedule is finally cemented. It's that baby. Saturday, Jacksonville at Kansas City, 430 Eastern. Giants at Eagles in the nightcap, 815. Marissa, are you feeling good? 
You're good? Oh, super confident. We like it. Then Sunday, we have Bengals, Bills at 3 Eastern. How are you feeling about that one, Brian? Brian's a Bills fan. He likes it. Okay, great, great analysis here on the program. Uh, Cowboys, <laughs> Niners at 6:30 to finish out the weekend. You know, I, I also like the Bengals game. Actually, thank you. Even without a pencil, I will say we told um, Andrew Whitworth we had a flight for him. I had spotters at the airport. He did not show up. He's easy to spot. Andrew Whitworth. There's a direct flight to Buffalo. Direct, like There's a direct flight to Buffalo. Okay, well, hold on. He wrote back to us. He did. I saw it this morning, and he said something about, I think he was asked about it, maybe on Good Morning Football a couple of weeks ago. But this, this, is, this is now. This is three, you know, three offensive linemen later. That, now we've got a real problem here. And now you're in the playoffs, and now you're playing, like you're a couple games from winning another Super Bowl. So I think the game has changed. And he made it seem, what did he write? Let's check. Can anybody look and read me what Andrew Whitworth wrote? Maybe we can fly it in. I swear, I saw, maybe, did I dream that he, did, maybe, wouldn't that be funny? Did he respond? What did he say? Do you guys, can you guys fly it in? How does that work? How does that machine, the magic machine work? Uh, he said, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he didn't write to me. He did. Where? Oh, I hear you, Kay, but as I told Peter Schrager, I, I'm assuming on Good Morning Football, my heart and mind say yes, but these giraffe slash skinny jean legs say no thanks. What is, he has skinny jean legs with the hoodie and blazer look? I don't, I don't quite, I don't, I just need you to stand there and block Basham and company. Like, I don't need it, to, we don't need it, to, what are we talking about here? We'll see. All right, we got Darius Butler joining the show. I understand Lombardi's out in LA. So in my head, breaking news, they're keeping Staley. Where does Sean Payton go? All of that with Darius Butler after this. So they're just going to clean house and keep sailing. 36-yarder from the right hash to win the game. Patterson's kick is up. The field goal is good! 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 Let's go! The Jaguars have won it! Wait, is that the guy who threw four interceptions in the first half of this game? Unbelievable wild card weekend time to hit the lights where we spotlight someone around the league who deserves a little more attention. Now, I think... Doug Peterson's getting his. He's coach of the year candidate. Then you have Trevor Lawrence, who's everybody's talking about what a performance by him, what a turnaround, and he's scary going into the next round. But today, let's focus on something that I see is sort of changing. And I like, as of course, one of my favorite things is when people in the NFL figures, whether it's a player, a coach, whatever, a team rewriting their narrative changing things around when things are bad and they get good or different things happen and they get to get to sort of change how they're viewed by people because it's not easy to accomplish in the National Football League and it never has been and I'm seeing a lot of love for a certain Trent Belke so let's focus on the Jags GM here 12 months ago Duval hated him it's just true. There was a literal, it was called the clown out movement, okay? This is the fan base's form of protest. This is a rowdy fan base, trust me. They exploded. Fans were saying, Sean Khan, Tony Khan, fire Balky, okay? We, we, got a, we got a clean house here. The Urban Meyer thing was a disaster. Get away from Balky. They wanted to distance the franchise as much as possible from the Meyer disaster. Khan said, nope. I'm sticking by my GM, and it's paid off, guys. Balky's first move was what? Bring in Doug Peterson. Give this Super Bowl caliber visor-wearing head coach a shot. Uh, and really, not everybody was in love with the decision at the time, but undeniable success. Peterson's completely fixed Trevor Lawrence. Not that he was broken, but gave him opportunities, did some things. Uh, and he is in the, the thick of that convo when it comes to coach of the year. Then he rewarded Khan's confidence by <laughs> swinging big in press my swing. How weak. Uh, listen, Trent handed out what were viewed largely as controversial contracts to a former Cardinal named Christian Kirk, who went on to lead the team in receiving with 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns, a big reason why they're here. And really, value-wise, outproduced his crazy contract, so everybody can zip it. Former Falcons linebacker, Foye Oluakon, okay? He leads the entire NFL with tackles this year. We talked to TJ Edwards on the uh, on the Eagles this week. We're going to show you guys the interview. He's he has the fourth most tackles. They've got the highest tackler in the National Football League. Nobody, everyone's like, meh, meh, bad deal. 
best deal ever. He also bought, brought in, if you think about it, and I was talking to Rayshon Jenkins last week, and he, I said, what is a Jay villain? I don't quite get it. They're the Jay villains. They really are. A, Trent brought in a bunch of guys who were written off elsewhere to rewrite their narratives. How much do we love this on the show? Evan Ingram. How much hate and venom did Evan Ingram get for being the draft choice of those giants? Zay Jones. Mm -hmm. Zay Jones never came Arden Key. They've all had career years in Jacksonville. He made that sneaky little deadline situation for Calvin Ridley happen, right? These are the J villains. And while I can't give him too much credit for picking Trevor Lawrence number one overall. He did land key pieces like Travis Etienne and Devin Lloyd in that draft as well to make things happen. So these additions, the Kirks, the Angrams, the Zay Joneses of the world, they all found the end zone during the Jags comeback on Saturday night. And I cannot imagine how that must have felt for him, watching all of it come to fruition after facing so much scrutiny, having to show up to work knowing people are going to be wearing clown hats, masks, and saying, get rid of you. There's a move. There's a movement about you against you. Like, oh, not good. Um, and if this video after the game, is any indication. Balky's riding high. Take a look. My two least favorite things, a performance vest, a dad vest, and a visor. But those two things work beautifully together. And this is remarkable redemption uh, of the highest honor. Maybe uh, top five if I were to rank them, and I'm sure we will in the postseason. If we have shows, when we have shows, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, but yeah, I think as we look at that, I don't know what, what's going on here, guys. I think if we look at that, we'll see they can continue. He'll deserve plenty more attention for what's been such a dramatic turnaround. All right, we're going to take a break here. I think we have Darius Butler on our show after this, and I also think we have Adam Vinatieri. Are you not paying your internet bills? What's up here? You're looking lean, d -butt. You're doing too many. OK. You're looking lean. Talking coaching here. The Chargers say they've parted ways with OC Joe Lombardi and passing game coordinator Shane Day. All right, let's check in with uh, the sheriff of Shutdown City and of all safeties and corners. Of course, our friend Darius Butler is here, and we're going to talk about that. Darius, what's up? What's up with your internet this morning? How we feeling? How we uh, living? Man, you know, I, I'm pretty pissed off right now. We're a persevere case. A lot of a lot of teams pissed off. My internet technology giveth and it taketh away. But we'll be all right. Maybe Hopefully you can hear me. I can hear you. Maybe McAfee can just Perfect. next week send that PJ, and you can just come here to LA and kick it for once. You know. That could work. That could work too. That could work for well, sure. Well, I see you at Elon Musk Starlink setup. Well, I'll definitely be out there. I'll be out there. Do some fan, fan doing fan fest stuff. Do cool. some other things. I'll be. I have a busy week. Be a fun week out in AZ. Okay. Well, I'll have to see you. I can't wait for that. Uh, you just saw the Chargers news. They get rid of Lombardi. I. I don't know if I like this because they. I think should be maybe looking at a way to upgrade from Brandon Staley, get them a little further than they've been getting, even though Brandon Staley deserves a lot of love for turning this team around, of course, getting some of the demons. Anthony Love deserve, Lynn deserves some love for that as well. Uh, what do you make of this news? Because it's not, it, they're not saying they're keeping Staley, but it seems like they're keeping Staley. Yeah, it sounds like when you fire the, the coordinator first. But, uh, you know, uh, you look. everybody looks and talks about Justin Herbert's uh, incredible numbers over his first three years, as they should. Uh, uh, Lombardi was his coach, his OC for two of those years. Uh, but it, it, somebody's got to take, somebody's got to bite the bullet. And unfortunately, it's Lombardi. Staley, I think, you know, he's getting bailed out here. You know, you you can't lose a game up 27-0. You you the, you got aggressive. That was your that was your brand last year. All your team your team bought in. Everybody bought in. And then you go you go and kick a field goal to go up uh, 13 points instead of going forward and trying to score with eight minutes left on the clock. A lot of big mistakes uh, made by Staley, I think, especially with Sean Payton being out there. A lot of people were connected him to this job. Um, not surprised to see Lombardi go. A lot of people been calling for his job for whatever reasons. Yeah. I don't think he's a problem there. Uh, but we'll see where they go forward uh, from here. Uh, you got Justin Herbert, so you got to build and you got to build a championship around a roster around him quickly. Yeah, you got to. They have a roster, I think. They but they need. You know, they sort of hire these coaches who are developing coaches. You know, like first-time head coaches mm -hmm. or whatever. I, I you would love to see. I would love to see them go for it. Like really go for somebody that's really experienced. But that's a price tag, and that's draft picks for Sean Payton. That's the storyline. And I love that. I don't know this, but. 
Champagne wants to be wined and dined. He's like, send the plane, <laughs> take me to French Laundry, like give me the ca the bumps of caviar on my hand at the restaurants that we're going to. Like who, who wants me and who wants me the most? But then you're looking at Dallas was the landing spot, right? And then it was, I mean, what McCarthy did, they can't get rid of him now, right? So. No, nah, D Dallas, Dallas, it was, the, you know, obviously it was, it was talks from Dallas from the day he stepped yeah. away from the Saints job. Um, they were connecting him and Jerry Jones. And, and I'm sure Mike McCarthy heard those, um, heard it. I'm sure he felt that pressure. And they came out and put on an excellent uh, performance last night, Mike McCarthy and that. So uh, I don't think it'll be Dallas anymore. So where is he going to go? I, I like him to go there. I tell you, last week when I came on the show, my best uh, available head coaching spot is still the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Um, because with all those things that, that you can say about Kyler Murray, um, and obviously he's banged up now, he'll be injured to start the season most likely, but he's still a very, very supremely talented quarterback just entering his prime, you would think. And then with Sean Payton coming in, he has instant credibility at the door. Um, so I don't think it'll any, be any clashing or any power struggles there with uh, Kyler Murray. And, uh, you know, he's obviously put up incredible numbers with, with Drew Brees in the past and won a Super Bowl and done all these things. And it'll be a warm weather place. I think they have the, uh, the picks to be able to trade. So I still think that's the spot uh, right now. Uh, if I was Sean Payton, that would be the spot I would want to take. Yeah, or spin zone. I'm just going to leave this here. Does he stay in New Orleans? Does he go back to New Orleans? Does something that, you know, is it grass is greener situation? He took a year uh, off. Does he say, this is where I love. I've got control here. Dennis Allen did a great job, especially to end the season. I still want to, I'm just saying, I don't know that I see yeah, the slam dunk uh, yeah. place for him to go because I think Kyler is a big question mark. He is a big question mark, but talent and coaches have egos, right? And, yeah. and you you see a guy that talented yep. and that skilled and that athletic, and you say as a as a great offensive mind, as a great coach, hey, I can work with that guy. Hey, totally. these teams, these weapons, maybe we can figure something out to keep D Hop happy and keep him there. Um, but you you have some some good pieces um on that team, and I think that'll still be a good team. And I, I always, if I have the talent, I can work with anything else. If I'm a coach, and I believe. Uh, Kyler Murray, his talent is, is uh, undeniable. You know, yeah. still top five at the position um, in the league when you're talking about just skill set. And that's what he did with Jameis, right? He saw Jameis and saw a guy, and you know, it's a, it's like a he was d trying to dunk in my head on on Bruce Arians. Like I, I, you couldn't, <laughs> I, you couldn't do it. But I think yeah, that's ego. That's what you're talking about. The confidence of I see the talent. Cliff couldn't do it. I can come in here and do it. I think lots of coaches that are successful do have that mentality. All right, let's talk wild card games here. Uh, were you surprised by this beat down by the Cowboys to Tom Brady? Uh, and is this Tom Brady's last game, you think, as an NFL quarterback? Um, it's so hard to say. But obviously, you know, everything that he, he went through, you know, personally this year to come back, we would all assume to play the game. It would be crazy for him to now walk away from it. And, and go to that booth in, in Fox. But after what we saw last night, it looks like that's where he needs to head, uh, honestly. Um, obviously, out there in Vegas, you got great weapons. You got great talent surrounding him. Josh McDaz was a former coach. He'll be out there. Um, so that will be a fit. But outside of that, what we saw last night, I, I think, you know, it should be done for Tom Brady. But I don't think Tom Brady thinks like any of us. So I think he'll be back on the football field next year, but definitely not in Tampa. Uh, I was surprised by the beatdown. You know, Tampa hasn't looked great all year, mm -hmm. but you still expect that, hey, Tom Brady at home, playoff game, okay, it's a new season, blah, blah, blah. Dallas hasn't been playing great. Uh, Dak hasn't been playing great. And then Dak just went out there and just flipped all those narratives on his head and played great football from wire to wire. He fit Michael Parsons, unbelievable per usual. And uh, Tampa just couldn't get anything done. They, they, they fired left which after after the game too, yeah. which was um which was interesting. It's super, it is super interesting. And then maybe you'll be getting some phone calls. Maybe that's why your your internet's not working because it's too much traffic. People trying to call Darius Butler to get on these coaching. Maybe staff. I'm probably missing it. Yeah, and they should. Unbelievable. Uh, Baltimore loses to uh, Cincinnati, of course. J.K. Dobbins, I want to play this for you. He was very vocal about how he felt about how he was used and how much. Ooh. He was used in this game. Let's take a listen. Not being the guy down to the, down, down to the goal. I should be the guy. I'm tired of holding that back. I'm tired of that. 12, it's the playoffs. I'm tired of holding that back. Let's go win the game. I'm tired of holding back on that. I'm tired of that. Did, like, did you say that to anybody? On yeah, the I did. 
I'm tired of I'm tired of I'm tired of it. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of it. Like I'm tired of it. Like, like I'm a playmaker. I'm a I'm a guy that my teammates feed off me when I'm on the field. I should be out there all the time. He had zero rushes in the red zone. Is he right? Hey, point, points were made, Kay. Points were made. You drafted him there. You brought him there for a reason. You have this run-heavy scheme, this run-heavy offense. Um, so much so where a lot of times you don't even have five eligible receivers out in the pass concepts because of the fullback you have with uh, Patrick Ricard, who's a great fullback in the run game. So, yeah, feed him. This, this dude came back and, and, and went to the front office, went to the trainers and told him, hey, I need another surgery. I need to get some things cleaned up. And now he's out there fighting. Yep. And like you said, it's the playoffs. This is time where we, this is why you played through whatever injuries you played through uh, throughout the season to get a chance um, to punch your ticket to the dance. And he wants to be involved. He wants carries. Um, obviously, the game turning, the game changing play in that game was that I felt quarterback sneak uh, by Huntley where uh, yeah. Hubbard went and ran it back for a touchdown. You hand it off to your running backs, even if it's not J.K. But, yeah, I, I feel J.K. 100%. Um, but the vibes are off in Baltimore. You don't typically see um, these type of things yeah. coming out of that Baltimore locker room, that Baltimore culture. You have Eric Weddle on a lot. He knows a ton about that culture. And uh, everybody that's left there, at least in my time in the league, spoke very, very highly from it. So this is very uncharacteristic, the J.K. stuff, the Lamar stuff. So uh, something to definitely keep an eye on up there in uh, Maryland. You're, I was about, I was trying to think of while you were talking, how am I going to ask? It just seems off. The vibes are off. The vibes are off. And it was Harbaugh with Melissa Stark. All of it was just off. And you, you mentioned <laughs> that was weird, but it was weird. It's not how it's weird. And then with Lamar, you know, he posts a statement explaining, having to explain to himself because he knows it's important that he's not out there, that he's not able to play. But then we ha we're hearing that he didn't travel with the team, which I think is a little vibey offy, sure. And yeah. then, then there's these cryptic quotes. I don't know if you've seen these. What is Lamar trying to say here? When you have something good, you don't play <laughs> with it. You don't take chances losing it. You don't neglect it. When you have something good, you pour into it. You appreciate it because when you take care of something good, that good thing takes care of you too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hey, you, you know we live in a world of the sub-tweets and mm -hmm. sub-quotes and posts um, and things like that. But, um, you know, this is him just speaking his mind, and, and, and he's right on point. You know, obviously you look around the league and you look at the guys that have been taken care of that have accomplished a lot less than Lamar Jackson. So um, they need to take care of his guy. And obviously he's missed some time. He's been banged up. And the narratives and the things that have kind of been leaked, you know how this game goes. Things start to leak out of that building about kind of like, hey, you know, Lamar – this was the timeline we expected. He's still not out there. He's still not practicing. He's not doing this. And you have teammates like Marlon Humphrey speaking up like, hey, I yeah. see Lamar still limping around. So um, like you said earlier, it just seems off in there. And uh, obviously Lamar wants his money. And it's, hopefully this doesn't continue to be a messy situation. But at the same time, Lamar has been the nice guy the whole time. Hmm. And I think even too much so. Even coming into this season, I think he had a, turn, a chance to turn kind of heel and be an asshole and be about his business. This. Yeah. And he wasn't. He showed up, he practiced, he played, he went to training camp, he did all those things. And then, um, you know, it's a cutthroat business. So yeah. he has to get his money, he has to get taken care of um, because any given snap, it can definitely all be taken care of. He's away been from too him. much the nice guy. I like. I actually like oh, that yeah. take a lot. And that post reminds me of like peak K Adams college MySpace breaking up, like boyfriend about to break up with him or like not me changing the song on my MySpace to something like take, sad. Take, taking him out of your top eight. He was out of my top eight and I would post me. <laughs> I used to put a song on there. It would turn from like, it would be like, wait, why did she change her song to that? And I would be, that was the mm -hmm. the OG subtweet was doing that. But yeah, he needs to sort of yeah. navigate. Would you advise him to get an agent? You know, it, it is times like this, times like these, where an agent will help. And we saw it with uh, Kyler Murray um, putting out, when his agent put out that long paragraph that nobody read um, yeah. except the Cardinals. <laughs> but that's you, you fighting that fight kind of in public, in, in the court of public opinion. You saw what Deshaun Watson's agent was able to get him as far as contract and money wise. Um, there, this is this is the time where you, you play because these are the games that these organizations and these front offices and GMs and they play yeah. and have played for a long time. And uh, as a player, as a young player, you're kind of I guess outmatched. Even having to, having to feel like he needs to tweet out his full injury right. status, like, hey, this is what's going on. It's unstable. It's swelling here. It's this and that. Like that's you don't ever see that from players, especially not franchise quarterbacks. So. 
Um, I would advise him to definitely have, you know, some some representation and some help on that side. You also, um, even just if it's a, even just if it's even just if it's advice, I feel like just it's a it's a lot to handle. And you would love to see the Ravens tweeting the same sort of support for him, saying he is hurt. He's not feeling, and that's not happening either. And you know, like maybe exactly. DaCosta won't do that. Maybe Bashadi won't do that. But when they were in the off season talking about this contract, they were saying he's the best. He doesn't care about money. He cares about winning a mm -hmm. Super Bowl. Like, where is that support now? If that you want that to be your guy, it's getting messy. You hate to see it. Let's talk yeah. a little bit more about these. They, even on the broadcast, yeah. they mentioned he didn't make the trip. Like, yeah. they could easily, hey, he didn't make the trip because of treatment or whatnot. But it, they just kind of left it up there. Like, oh, Weird. the not on the sideline, playoff game. Like, okay. Weird. I didn't like that. But I like that you like how he's handled himself. And I, I, I'm a, a huge fan. I just hope he gets paid. I want to see the best for him. Uh, divisional round. Eagles, start hot, some injuries. You got Jalen, you got Lane Johnson. They, are, are we thinking they'll be okay in this game? Because that team, the Giants, are spooky AF. Hey, the Giants are rolling right now. Uh, resting their starters week 18. Looks like it was the right decision. Daniel Jones looked un. Believable. The job that Mike Kafka and Brian Dayball has been able to do with him has been great taking care of the ball, using his legs, making throws to a lot of guys that we didn't know coming into this year. But Ajay Hodgins balling as well. Saquon Barkley doing his thing. Or not a ton of touches either. So it's not even like they're running him into the ground. But to JK's point, it is that time of the season where they're going to need to. But I think the Eagles will be just fine. I, I think they'll kind of pick off, um, hopefully not where they left off in week 18, but where they left off before Jalen Hurts um, got hurt. And they got this extra time to get healthy. CJ GJ may be returning to that secondary. Or so that'll be a big bump for that defense. So I think the Eagles, it's tough to beat a team three times in the same season, yeah. especially, you know, a divisional opponent. But uh, I, I like the Eagles to hit the ground running in this one. We're, we're going to go to Shutdown City in a minute, but I, this is the divisional round schedule. And we got to get your upset pick. So the Eagles aren't it. Is there a team that you think might pull an upset this week? Well, who's favorite in, uh, I believe the Cowboys are the favorite in that Niners game, right? I believe so. The Niners are so slightly bad. favored. I think three and a half is what I saw, and I can't believe that I know that. Oh, the Niners are the Niners. Oh, look at you, Kay. Look at you. Hmm. Dang, I don't know. See, I, I don't even have the lines of these games yet. I need to know who's actually the You underdog. think the no favorites Jags win? No, um, we're definitely going to have some upsets. I got to see who's favorite. Um, if we can get the lines, or somebody just put them in your ear, in my ear, real quick. Can someone Jags put them in my ear? I don't think KC wins. I mean, I don't think KC gets upset. I'm sorry. Um, but all three of those games, the other three games can go either way, honestly. Is anybody back there working? <laughs> anybody, anybody back there? there? They took, all, they took the day off they, like my Yeah, internet. they're not listening. It's, it's okay. Let's go to Shutdown City. Nobody's listening. It's what it is, what it is. Let's go. <laughs> Let's hit the road. Shutdown City. Let's go. With no internet in Shutdown City Woo! today, we still got Asante Samuel Jr. He's home, so he'll be able to enjoy this. But three interceptions in the first half. Unbelievable. Obviously, the team couldn't finish it, but three interceptions, three picks on 11 targets, two PBUs. Unbelievable. So he had to get in shutdown city, even though he's home. And then out there in San Fran, 38, young boy, Lenore. Look at his break. Look at his anticipation. Hey. Give me that. Oski. What a play. <laughs> Put the young boy in the lineup. He's been playing his tail off. Uh, so Shadi Moore making his way to Shutdown City as well, and then up there in New York, your old hometown, New York, those Giants, man. Uh, Justin Jefferson, obviously big bad Justin Jefferson, been gritting all over every secondary in the league this year. Adoree Jackson and company locked him down, and, and just every time he caught the ball, he was stapled to the ground immediately. Did not give up the big play at all. You see this last game, this last play of the game when they threw a little check down uh, to T.J. Hawkinson. That was because Justin Jefferson was double teamed once again, and that's what Kurt wanted to go with the ball. So they came in with a game plan to shut down Justin Jefferson and they executed that game plan. So shout out to Dory Jackson and his New York Giants team. So everybody's in there in that New York Giants secondary. <laughs> so, Xavier McKinney, Dory, Julian Love, they all played their tails off. So it's really a city council instead of a mayor. Oh, I like it. See, there you go. There you go. But but Adore, Adore gets he gets to sit at the desk. The desk. He, he followed uh, he followed Justin Jefferson, you know, left yeah. right all, all day long. All right. Well, 
We don't have the odds still somehow, but it's not like we're, it's not like we're owned by a sports betting company, and, and you know I'm sure our CEO is watching this and saying what is going on. We don't have it, but we love you, and we'll see you at Super Bowl, and we'll talk to you next week. And thank you for being such a champ through the uh, the issues. Hey, you know you got to fight, you got to persevere. Thank you for having me. Thank today. you <laughs> as <laughs> always. Uh, You're the best man to man podcast this week, uh, and support our guy Chris Seuss. We apologize, we'll have the odds uh, uh, figured out by the time we get back from the break. Bye, guys. First playoff game down. On to the next. Big dog. Stephen A. Watch him up. Still in the dance, and we're gonna keep dancing. <laughs> Enjoy that game? Yeah. This one goes down as one of the greatest, oh. greatest, okay? Greatest victories I've ever had. I am proud of everybody in this room. You guys found a way to get that done. Each week's gonna be harder and harder. Let's just keep doing it. Don't matter how we win, it's if we win. We need you next week in Buffalo. Find a way to get it. One, two, three. Be great. In the bar will never not make me laugh. I love it. Coming up, we've got more on the divisional round matchups. Taking a look at him here, uh, we have Adam Vinatieri on the show, a four-time Super Bowl champ, most clutch kicker. What happened to Maher yesterday? He's going to have to help us. Appreciate Darius Butler joining the show. Gronkowski will be on, of course. We've got Mark Ingram. We've got plenty of guests all week, but we have a very special one right now. 24 NFL seasons. It's so crazy. 24 as the kicker for the New England Patriots and the Indianapolis Colts. He became the NFL's all-time leading scorer and has kicked the most field goals in NFL history. Please welcome four-time Super Bowl champion and future Hall of Famer Adam Vinatieri. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on. It's so great to see you. 24 years is unbelievable. And you're the perfect guest to have on after what happened. Unfortunate history made last night. What happened with Brett Maher? Four extra points missed. What went down? Tough day for him, obviously. Um, you know, anybody can miss uh, the new extra points. I shouldn't say new. They've been five, six years now. But uh, you know, it's a it's a distance that can be missed if if you're not. Uh, I guess if you're, you know, if you do something wrong, it, you can miss one, obviously. And uh, unfortunately, I think once you miss one, you start thinking about it a little bit more, and it just snowballed on him. Unfortunately, you know, I've I've watched him for years. He's a very good kicker. Um, you know, miss one right and pushed another one right, and then the third one, you're almost guaranteed to compensate and aim left because yeah. you you know. And then it just from there, you know, my goodness, it was it was a tough day. But thankfully for his team, uh, you know, they were playing so well that, you know, the Cowboys were moving the ball and scoring touchdowns. So ultimately it didn't affect the outcome for his team. But uh, yeah, you know, you, you obviously want to win that game, but you want to you want to put your stamp on helping the team and, and, and not doing it that way. But, uh, you know, that's the life of a kicker for us. Uh, yeah job is 90% mental and not as physically demanding as a lot of other positions, but uh, playoffs is when you make your bread and butter, and unfortunately, that was a tough day for him. It's so true, and, you know, we try, I tried to look back at when you had ever missed t two in a row, and I think it only happened maybe once, ever. And I think maybe I felt you know, when I was looking at that, I was like, man, I don't give enough credit to kickers who miss and then don't miss again because it's I would probably miss every time if I was out there, if I was in, in my head about it. So what's the key to staying mentally tough when attempting that next kick after you miss? Well, I think that's one of the most difficult kicks is after you've missed one, you've got a lot of stuff running through your mind. Um, you really just have to let the process take care of itself. I mean, you know, anybody that makes it to the NFL – has kicked a million footballs in their day and they've done it from every position and every situation and circumstance. So you really almost just have to, you know, get get out of your own mind. I think that's the biggest issue is mm. trust the guys up front, trust your snap and hold that it's going to be there where it's supposed to be. And and then, you know, you've done it so many times, just let your body take over. And, and I think when when a miss happens, if you can Forget about that and move forward, I think, is probably, you know, the, the biggest key to being successful at that point. You start thinking about it and you're you're letting that into your mind and then self-doubt gets in there a little bit. And then you're you're, you know, I mean, gosh, he's probably made a million 33 yard field goals. But now all of a sudden when it's in a game like that and you've missed one or two, yeah. the next one becomes ultimately much more difficult, which shouldn't be. But, you know, you just you just got to get out of your own mind at that point. Yeah, he made one, which is great. But I'm trying to think, 
this flight home. I was watching footage of them landing. They did win. Like, hello, they won, right? They won the game. And I like Dak Prescott. They were asking him about it. And Dak said, I played like crap last week. So, like, I, like, I you know, so you have some bad games and you bounce back for them. What is the process between a kicker and coaches and their team now? Because there's got to be a confidence discussion or conversation. And, and the unfortunate truth, and it's not fair because it's really the only position that it's like with this, is that do the Cowboys have to do some due diligence? Uh, and, you know, there's, there's Twitter telling me that they're probably going to have to think about bringing somebody in. What's the process and what are the conversations happening in that Cowboys organization right now? And like what Dak said, you know, everybody has a tough game, myself included. We've all had games that we'd like to forget about. You hope that it's on a winning situation in the middle of the season, mm. but all of a sudden now you get to the playoffs and games are, are you win or you go home and the competition is amongst, you know, really good teams. So the margin of error just shrinks that much more. You know, you don't have a lot of opportunity for a bad play here or there. And honestly, if you go back to, a lot of games in the playoffs, you know, it's one pivotal play that makes a difference in the outcome of a game. And so, yeah, you know, if it's a confidence thing for him or for the team, then they may decide to make a move. If they think that, hey, you know what, he's fine, he'll be good next week. I think as a kicker, you want to have an opportunity next week right away, get that monkey off your back and get it behind you and, and keep going. The longer that you have to wait, yeah. the harder it is. You know, you never want to miss a kick at the end of the season because now you've got six months to wait until the next opportunity. So, I, you know, it's one of those things. Being, If it wasn't a playoffs, I think he's got a longer leash. The fact that it's in the playoffs and they're going to the next game that's even more important, they've got all, they've got to be clicking on all cylinders or you're in trouble. What should the Cowboys do, Adam? No, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. You know, honestly, you know, it's one of those things, if you have trust and belief that, that Brett is going to get it done, then you don't do anything. By bringing in more kickers, it only puts a little bit more stress on him. So yes. if you think that you have to make a move, then you jump on those other, you know, the waiver wire and see who's out there and, see, you, you know, you do a bunch of tryouts and see who you're going to do. But if, you're, if your idea is to keep Brett for the remainder, you know, next week on, then yeah. you probably don't do that because that's just going to make it that much more stressful for him and the whole organization. You bring somebody in, you're adding pressure on the new guy and on Brett, and then you, the guys are available on the waiver wire at this point in the season for a reason as well. So there's, right. it's a tough, you know, I'm with you, Adam. I'm glad we don't have to I, I feel it. like if there was guys out there that were better than him, they'd already be on I agree. that team. So I agree. I'm not saying that you don't. Again, it's way above my pay scale. You know, it's a tough decision. You know, we've all been through tough games. But, you know, the good ones have a bad game and then they bounce back. Yeah. So I guess time will see. You know, time will tell. Let's see what they're going to do. You are the best one. I, w I wonder quickly, are, are you so clutch in every aspect of your life, like everyday <laughs> life, like proposals, stuff with your kids, like randoms? Like, are you just clutch always? No pressure? Well, I enjoy pressure situations, I think. You know, it's always been one of those things for me. I've been, I think McAfee said it best. Pat McAfee yeah. always said, Adam's the most competitive guy I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> when, when, when you're in that situation, I think you everything's a game and you always want to win. And I look at some of my former teammates that um, are Hall of Famers, you know, the, the, the Peyton Mannings and the Tom Brady's and the go on down the list, you know. These guys always wanted to be in the middle of the game. They wanted to be the reason why we won or lost. And, and I think ultimately I was in that same situation. I think the thing that drove me the, the most crazy in my career is standing on the sideline with two seconds left and watching their right. kicker be out there. It drove me crazy. I wanted to be the guy that – that it came down to my my foot because I was confident enough that that ultimately I'm going to make almost all of those and we're going to win. So being helpless on the sideline drove me crazy. I, I love that, and I love, and I remember you retiring like on McAfee's show, and he was like, "Wait, what? What is going on here?" So it's all sort of come full circle. <laughs> and he, of course, part of the FanDuel family, and you're sort of involved, as I understand, as well. We're talking pressure. We're talking big kicks. You have been tasked with helping Rob Gronkowski with his kick of destiny for FanDuel. He's kicking a field goal live during the Super Bowl. <laughs> I still laugh about this. $10 million in FanDuel free bets on the line. How is Gronk? I asked him about your advice. Is he taking it? Well, first of all, lots of things to say about that. 
love FanDuel, love Gronk. It, when they when they called and asked me to be a part of it, I'm like, absolutely. There's not a better man for the job to get to get Rob mentally and physically ready to make a big kick. Is is how I thought it. Now, obviously, Rob's got a million Super Bowl moments. He's a he's a future Hall of Famer. This dude is awesome. And, and you know what? I met him a handful of times, but actually getting to spend days working with him. He he is so much fun. I love the dude. He is he's he's full of energy. He's funny. You never know if he's joking or being serious. But uh, but when it came right down to it, he is a perfectionist and he absolutely wants to make this kick. You know, mm. everything that you see, like if he didn't make it, he's he's frustrated. He's asking me, like, what am I gonna do? What's it? You know, and it's it's sincere. It's genuine. So it's a uh, it's a lot of fun and it's just been a great campaign. You know, to think that this is FanDuel's first ever Super Bowl campaign and. And I get to be a part of it. It is. It is so much fun. I'm. I'm excited. I. You know, it. It's not an easy thing. Obviously, look at the game last night. You know, making kicks in high pressure situations is not an easy thing, especially if you're a person that doesn't do it. You know, professionally. Obviously, Rob scored millions of points in in the National Football League, and a lot of them during the Super Bowl. But this will be a new one for him. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see how he does. It's going to be. It's going to be awesome. With you coaching it, it's a can't miss, in my opinion. Uh, okay, uh, one last one for you. We only have a minute left in the whole show. But you've kicked 29 game winners, including two in the Super Bowl. I hope those numbers are right. In your career, what is the most pressure you've ever felt on one kick? Probably similar to what Rob will be feeling on Super Bowl Sunday. I would say definitely the divisional game against the Raiders in the snow, the, the infamous tough, tough rule game. That was one that, uh, you know, you miss this kick, you're cleaning out your locker, and the season's over. And just with the sheer difficulty of, you know, X amount of inches on the on the ground, a blizzard, you know, 45-yard field goal, everything about that was a difficult thing. I still don't know. I, I watch it now and I get goosebumps on it. I still laugh not knowing how the heck <laughs> I made that kick. But for sure, that was the one that's uh, the most difficult and probably the one that I'm the most proud of. And, and when you get to say you've got a couple game winners in Super Bowls, that's saying something. It's so true. That, one's, I think that one's pretty impressive, you, even for me. You know, Brady's not doing anything now. Maybe he can come be, with a snow machine, and we can relive that in the commercial. <laughs> you, Brady, and Rob Gronkowski, Adam Vinatieri, you are an absolute legend. Uh, and you're swole. Like, what is, we have to talk about this next time we're on. Unbelievable.